and sisters, all praise to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I see sisters are looking glorious as ever. All praises, the beautiful daughters of Zion. All praise to the Most High. Let's give the sisters a hand for that day. All praises to the Most High. All praises. I see the brothers, brothers looking glorious this day. Okay, I don't recognize you, brothers. You're looking glorious. All praises to the Most High. Okay, let's go over the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, it's going to be a relatively short to a long class, but we'll go through it. All right? Okay. All praises to the Most High. All praises. So, Feast of Tabernacles 2021. All praises. The second last day. All right? All praises to the Lord. Let's open up with the book of Leviticus 23, verse 34. Leviticus 23, verse 34. Let's read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 34. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel, say, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Read. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. Shall be what? Shall be an holy convocation. So now this, these are the feasts that the Lord has ordained for all Israel. You understand? In the lands of our captivity, we are commanded to observe and rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. So this, what we're observing this week, is the Feast of Tabernacles. How the Lord took care of us after we were delivered out of Egypt in the wilderness. Read that again, verse 34. Again, jump up to verse 34 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 34. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel, say, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. Shall be the Feast of what? Shall be the feast of tabernacles. Shall be the feast of tabernacles. Come on. For seven days unto the Lord. For how many days? For seven days unto the Lord. So the feast of tabernacle is a seven day celebration ordained by the Most High God. It's not a suggestion. You understand? It's a command that we, the children of Israel, must observe this day in the lands of our captivity. Read. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. A holy convocation means a holy gathering. That's why on the first day we have to come together as a congregation. You understand? On the first day, he says it shall be a holy convocation. Come together. Read. Ye shall do no servile work therein. You shall do no servile work therein. That means what? It's the Sabbath. It's ordained as a Sabbath unto the Lord. You understand? No buying, no selling on that day. You understand? No working, because it's the Lord's Sabbath day. But it's a feast. You understand? So we can cook on those days if it does not fall on the seventh day Sabbath. You understand? Read. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Come on. On, on the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. Read. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Come on. It is a solemn assembly. Is a what? It is a solemn assembly. We must come together. It's a solemn assembly ordained by God. Read. And ye shall do no servile work therein. He says ye shall do no servile work therein. Remember it says seven days he shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Guess what? We're going to deal with that. The offering of an He says what? We shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. We're going to deal with that. Keep reading. Verse 37. Come on. Verse 37. Read. These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the what? These are the feasts of the Lord. So the Feast of Tabernacle is a feast of the Lord. It's not a worldly custom. It's not a philosophy of man. But it was ordained by God for all Israel to observe this day. Read. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Okay, you see that thing? To offer, an offer, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Come on. A burnt offering. Uh -huh. And a meat offering. Read. A sacrifice. Come on. And drink offerings. Read. Everything upon this day. Everything upon his day. You see that thing? So for seven days, under the law of animal sacrifice, that's what we would do. Offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, because we were under the law of animal sacrifice. You understand? Keep reading. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts 
and beside all your vows, Come on. and beside all your free will offerings, mm. which ye give unto the Lord. So now he says, besides your what? Besides your gifts, besides all your vows, besides all your free will offerings, which ye shall give unto the Lord. Meaning outside of that, guess what? You observe the Feast of Tabernacles. You understand? But what we're reading here, it says, this does not include this. This is what you do normally to the Lord and for the Lord. But the Feast of Tabernacle, you have to observe it. It's a must. That's why we're observing it right now in the lens of a slavery. Read. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month. The seventh month is what? What is the seventh month, man? You, man. What is the seventh month? September. September is the seventh month. Go ahead. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month, Read. when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, come on, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Read. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. Read. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. On the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Read on. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees. The boughs of goodly trees, wait. Branches of palm trees. Branches of palm trees, come on. And the boughs of thick trees. Wait. And willows of the brook. Come on. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Ye shall what? And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. You see the key word is says rejoice. You're supposed to rejoice before the Lord your God. Meaning what? Have the spirit of joy in you. Don't be sad, looking all sad like you, your puppy died. No. That's what the most said. The most said don't want that. On this day, we're supposed to what? We're supposed to have the spirit of joy. I don't want to see nobody walking around here looking sad with a long face. You must keep the laws of the most said God. You must have joy doing it. Understand that thing. Give me that in Psalms 149. Because there is part of the reason why we ended up in slavery was because we did not keep the laws of God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. You understand? You know what? Before you get that, give me Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 verse 47. Part of the reason why we went into slavery is because we did not want to keep the laws of God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Because the Lord is commanding us that we must create what? We must get the boughs of the trees, the palm trees, you understand? And set up boots. That's what you see here at the back of us. You understand? This is the best we can do because to show our faith. You understand? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 47. Go ahead. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. With what? With joyfulness. With joyfulness. It's because you don't want to serve the Lord your God with joyfulness. Read. And with gladness of heart. With gladness of heart. Read. For the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things. For all the promises that are written in this Bible, they were all given to us. But because we were rebelled against the Lord our God, the most said God, guess what? He rejected us because we rejected him. That's what we're reading here. So now in the lens of our captivity, as we repent, in our journey of repentance, guess what? The most said God require our spiritual sacrifices. One of those spiritual sacrifices is the spirit of joy. The spirit of joy is a spiritual is part of the spiritual sacrifices that we must offer up unto the Most High God. Understand that thing? You understand? Now, give me Psalms 149. Psalms chapter 149. Okay. Psalms 149. Start with verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 1. Read. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye. Do what? Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. We better praise the Lord your God. The most said God wants us to praise him. You understand? Wait. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Read. And his praise. His what? His praise. And his praise, come on. In the congregation of saints. In the congregation of saints. The 12 tribes of Israel, we are the congregation of saints. Read. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let Israel do what? Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 2. Read. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. So we are Israel. The Lord is commanding us that we must rejoice in him. 
Read. That the children of Zion. That the what? That the children of Zion. That the children of Zion. We are the children of Zion. Read. Be joyful in their king. Be what? Be joyful in their king. God is commanding us that we must be joyful in our king, the Black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. We must be joyful in our king. Read again. The book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 2. Read. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Come on. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Come on. Let them praise his name. Let them what? Let them praise his name. Let them praise his name. You better praise the Lord your God. Read. In the dance. In a what? In the dance. That's why I don't want to see nobody depressed out here. Read. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel of and harp. You see that thing right there? You better have joy this day. You better have joy on this feast day. This is a feast day. We must rejoice in the most high God. The reason why we are at the bottom of all nations is because we do not want to serve the most high God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. You see, we as a nation, we are rebellious. So much so that now we are at the bottom, we don't want to change our ways. You understand? You steal that old Negro, you don't want to let that Negro go. You steal that old Negress, you don't want to let her go. Why? Because, because you like being at the bottom. We like confusion. But now, the most High God is giving us the salt. He's giving us our flavor back. We better go back, come back to this Bible. Sink your spirit in this book. See yourself in this Bible. Your forefathers, your foremothers. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Okay? Leviticus 23. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 38 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 38. You know what? Read verse 40. The book of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 40. Come on. And ye shall take to you, shall take you on the first day, the boughs of goodly trees, uh -huh. branches of palm trees, Come on. and the boughs of thick trees, the boughs of thick trees, come on, and willows of the brook, come on, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. He says, ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Could you imagine? The most high God in the lands of our captivity said, listen, I still have mercy on you. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to ordain a feast for you to praise me in the lands of your captivity so that it doesn't seem to be so bad. So he said, listen, I'm here. this is mercy of the Lord right here. By right, the most high God was not supposed to ordain his feast. He's supposed to make us feel it on a, every single day that we did wrong. But in the lands of our captivity, he said, you know what? I'm going to create a feast that you can what? You can forget that you're in slavery just for the seven days. Just forget about your sorrows. Praise the Lord your God. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? So we must move in the spirit of joy. You understand? I don't want to see nobody depressed. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 41. Come on. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever. For how long? Forever. For how long? Forever. We must keep these laws forever. Read. In your generations. In your generations. Meaning what? Our children, our children's children, so on and so forth. Read. Ye shall celebrate it. You shall what? Ye shall celebrate A it. celebration that means there's, there's the spirit of joy and gladness. You understand that thing? Because guess what? That's medicine. That thing is medicine right there. Joy. Gladness of heart. That's medication. Some of us, we, we it's very difficult for even a brother to smile. It's difficult for a sister to smile. You know, what the hell is this? Why? Because the spirit of the Lord is not in you. You better pray for the spirit of joy. You're not supposed to be walking around depressed all day. Pray for the spirit of joy and the Lord will give what the Lord will give the spirit unto you. But you must be sincere when you do it. Read. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall what? Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Go ahead. Ye shall dwell in booths. You shall what? Ye shall dwell in booths. No, 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 no. You shall dwell in normal houses. You shall dwell in booths. You shall dwell in booths. That's what you're looking at here. We dwelt in booths. You understand? We dwelt in booths because of what? We are showing our faith. You understand? 
This is a proof that we believe in the Lord. You understand? Our works, this is the works proves our faith. We do what the Lord is saying because we believe what this Bible is saying. Read that thing again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 42. Read. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. You shall dwell in booths seven days. Come on. All that are Israel, all that are Israelites born. All that are Israelites born, meaning the children of Israel must dwell in booths. Read. Shall dwell in booths. Shall what? Shall dwell in booths. Shall what? Shall dwell in booths. That's why now, because, you know, we've been up the whole night, but we went into the booths to sleep. Why? Because it's the law. To remember what the Lord did for us. To remember the deliverance out of Egypt. The message that the Lord had upon our forefathers and foremothers when we were doing evil in Egypt. You understand? Following after their customs and ways. The Lord said, I'm going to deliver you out of this thing. I see that you are going through it. Give me that in Exodus 3. You understand? Exodus 3 verse 9. Watch this. Because a lot of the times, man, you must not be thinking, no, Jesus knows my heart. That's Christianity 101. The most high God don't like that. Exodus chapter 3. This is what the Lord wants. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 9. Uh -huh. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel. The what? The cry of the children of Israel. The what? The cry of the children of Israel. The cry of the children of Israel. That is why you see our people today, you know, your prayer life, your prayer life is messed up. You don't have a consistent prayer life. You don't have a consistent prayer life. You must have one. You understand? Give me that in Daniel 6 and 10 real quick. You must have a consistent prayer life. Because when you pray, that's how you cry to the most high God. So you must constantly be nagging the Lord. Deliver us out of this thing. You understand? Read. The book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10. Go ahead. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed. Come on. He went into his house. He did what? He went into his house. Wait. And his windows being opened. Come on. In his chamber. Uh -huh. Toward Jerusalem. Toward where? Toward Jerusalem. That's why when we pray, we face towards our homeland. Where we come from as a people. Wait. He kneeled upon his knees. Come on. Three times a day. How many times? Three times a day. How many times? Three times a day. And guess what? They were in captivity under Babylon. So today, we're in captivity under America. You understand? And our forefather Daniel, he had a consistent prayer life. Three times a day, he cried unto the Lord. Today, if you don't have a consistent prayer life, you don't do it three times a day, guess what? You better change that. You better change that thing. Start doing it consistently. You understand? That's what the Lord wants. He wants us to cry unto him. Because when you don't do it consistently, that means most of the time you trust on, on yourself. You think you can get yourself out of this. No, you cannot get yourself out of this. Look where we at in slavery. Because we trusted on our own wicked minds. Read the thing again. The book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10. Read. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed. Come on. He went into his house. He did what? He went into his house. Come on. And his windows being opened yes. uh -huh. in his chamber towards Jerusalem. Come on. He kneeled upon his knees uh -huh. three times a day. Come on. And prayed. He did what? And prayed. And prayed. And prayed. And prayed. That's how he cried unto the Lord. Read. And gave thanks. And did what? And gave thanks. You see, a lot of us, we don't give thanks unto the most high God. You leave the house, you don't pray to the Lord. You come back, you don't pray to the Lord. You understand? You wake up in the morning, you don't pray to the most high. You don't send the prayers up. Thank you, Father, for your mercy this day. Because you think you deserve this life. You think you deserve it. You go to sleep, you don't do it. Because you think I've got a fringes and a bottle of blue. The Lord wants you to cry out to unto him. Cry. Don't say Jesus knows my heart. No. You better cry to the Lord. You pray. That's how we that's how we cry to the Lord. We pray to the most high. That's what the Lord wants. You understand? He gave thanks. This is an example our forefather Daniel set for us. Read. And gave thanks before his God. Uh -huh. As he did a, a four times. Because that was his custom. 
He was accustomed to do that means what? He was doing it consistently. Guess what he did? He had a schedule. He had a timetable. He set his life in order. He ordered his ways aright to please the Father. You understand? So that's what we're supposed to do this day. Go back to Exodus 3. Okay? 3 verse 9 again. The book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 9. Wait. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. Wait. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. You see what he's saying? It says, I see, I also see the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Understand? The most that God sees that the, the sees that the, how the nations are oppressing us. The Lord sees that. Don't think the most I don't see that. The most that the Heavenly Father sees how today the so-called white men they are oppressing us all over the world. All the nations that put us in slavery, the Lord sees what they are doing to us. What they did to us there back then, what they are still doing to us this day. The Lord sees that. But the most that God wants us to cry unto him. Not trust in our slave masters. Not trust in oppression. But we must trust upon him and cry unto him. Then the Lord will hear us. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Verse 10. Come on. Come now, therefore, uh -huh. and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. You see what he's saying? He says, because they cried unto me, guess what? He says, now I'm going to send you a deliverer, a savior. Read. That thou mayest bring forth my people. You see that thing? God's people. We are God's people. The children of Israel. Read. That thou mayest bring forth my people, uh -huh. the children of Israel, Come on. out of Egypt. Out of slavery. The children of Israel out of bondage, captivity. Okay? Go back to where was that now? Leviticus 23. Okay? Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 42. Read that again from the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 42. Read. Right. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. Ah. Uh -huh. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Shall dwell in booths. The most said God wants us to do this thing as it is written. You understand? Because back then, guess what? We, we had to cut down trees and actually set up booths like you see at the back of us. But we don't own no land. We're in slavery. We don't own no land. That's why now we have to rent this stuff out now. We have to buy tents now that are made by our oppressor. So that we can do what we can observe what the Lord is saying. You understand? Great. That your, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel. That your what? That your nations may know. No, 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 no. Read that again. Verse 43. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse, 30, verse 43. Come on. That your generations may know. Your generations, your children. Give me that in Psalms 132, verse 12. It says that your generations may know. That means our children must learn this. Our children must attend this. Our children must be excited about this thing instead of being excited about Christmas and white Jesus. Read what you got. Psalms 132, verse 12. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 132, verse 12. Read. If thy children will keep my, co my covenant. You see that thing? If thy children will keep my covenant. We are the children of the Lord, you understand? And we've got kids too. We must teach them the laws of God. Read. And my testimony. And my what? And my testimony. And the testimonies of Christ. Read. That I shall teach them. That shall I what? That I shall teach them. That I shall teach them. Read. Their children also. Their what? Their children also. Their what? Their children also. Their children. Their children. So our children must know this thing. They must be taught. We shall sit upon thy throne forevermore. You see that thing? Our children also, they will inherit the kingdom. That's what he said right there. They will inherit the kingdom because right now, we are paving the way for the second coming of Christ. Our Lord and Savior, the black Messiah. Go back to where was that now. Leviticus 23 verse 43 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 43. Read. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. Because that's how we were dwelling in the wilderness. 
when the Lord was over us, a cloud, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The Lord was with us. He was with us back then. He is with us this day. Understand that. Read. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Out of slavery. Come on. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. That's what he said right there. He is the Lord our God. So guess what? We better praise him in the lands of our captivity. We better praise the Lord our God. No excuses. No, no, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, I'll read my, my book. I'll read my Bible tomorrow. That means you're double-minded. Because you think tomorrow is promised. Only a fool thinks that. No, I didn't read it today. No, I'll read tomorrow. No, 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 no. Give me that in, uh, give me that in uh, Proverbs. Read that. Proverbs 27. Okay. Tomorrow's promise to no man. Understand that. Proverbs 27 verse 1. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 27 verse 1. Read. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. You see what the Lord is saying? Don't boast yourself of tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Who decides when tomorrow comes? The Lord does. You understand? Wait. For thou know, knowest not what a day may bring forth. You don't know what the day will bring forth. So guess what? Seize the moment. Use the opportunity that the Lord has given to you now. That's what the Lord is teaching us. Because a lot of us, we tend to do what? No, you know, I'll just watch the video that the, that the, that the leadership brought up. I'll watch it tomorrow. Get I download and listen to it when I'm going to work because you think tomorrow is promised to you. While the class is coming out, you're not making notes. Why? Because you think, nah, I'll just watch the video. You see that? Why? Because the mind is not right. The mind is not correct because you think tomorrow is promised to you. Give me that in James 4 verse 13. Read that for me. The book of James. Because the apostle James, he, he addressed this thing. Why? Because Israel is fond to doing that. We as a people, we like doing that thing. No tomorrow. No, we don't have tomorrow. Tomorrow is decided by the Lord. James, chapter 4, verse 13. Read that. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 13. Come on. Go to now, ye that say, uh -huh. Today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city. You see that thing? He says, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city. Go ahead. And continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. So now you are planning about the things that are not yet come. Read. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. You see that thing? Whereas you don't know what shall be tomorrow. You don't know what's coming on the morrow. You don't know what's coming. Read. For what is your life? For what is your life? Come on. It is even a vapor. It is even a what? It is even a vapor. You see, a vapor, it disappears by what? As, as soon as the sun comes, as soon as he, uh, the, the, the heat hits the, 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 moisture, the moisture, what happens to it? It disappears like that. So the Lord says you can disappear just like that. That's what he's saying. Wait. That appeared for a little time. It appears for a little time. Because today our lifespan is very short. Why? Because of sin. Because of what we did in Genesis chapter 6. Read. And then vanished away. And then what? And then vanished away. The Lord says you can disappear. You can disappear just like that. Read. Next verse. For that ye ought to say. The Lord is telling you what you must say. Read. If the Lord will. If the what? If the Lord will. If the who? If the Lord will. No, if my boss. If the Lord will. You see that thing? If the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Because the Lord is the one that decides that. If the Lord will. Read. We shall live. We shall what? We shall live. Because it's the will of the Father that you live. It's decided by the Most High God. All our days are numbered by the Heavenly Father this day. Read. And do this. Oh, that. You see that thing? So he's teaching us, don't plan tomorrow. Do what you have today. Meaning what? You have an opportunity to read the Bible, guess what? Read your Bible. You understand? Listen to classes. Why? Because you are keeping yourself in the spirit at all times. Because it's very easy to go out the spirit. You understand? Give me that in um, Hebrews 12. Okay? It's very easy to go out the spirit. So the Lord is teaching us, stay in the spirit. 
Hebrews chapter 12. Okay? Hebrews 12 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. A cloud of witnesses. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Hold this. Give me the book of Psalms over for this three. It says we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Watch this. Psalms 104 verse 3. Read that for me. We coming back here. Come on. Of Psalms chapter 104 verse 3. Read. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Read. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who maketh the what? Who maketh the clouds his chariot. The transportation system of the Most High God that the angel use. He says, who maketh the clouds his chariot. Read. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Now, watch this. Go back to Hebrews 12. The Lord is showing us something right here. Pay attention. Watch this. Hebrews 12 verse 1 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. He says that, he says what, so great a cloud of witnesses. Guess what? The angels up there, they are watching you. Your every move. You understand? What that Negro did last night. Uh, that slick Nick. The Lord sees that thing. Understand that? Don't think you're hiding from the most high. You cannot hide from the father. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 15, real quick. Okay? Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. Come on. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, meaning everywhere. Read. Beholding the evil and the good you said the eyes of the lord talk about the angels looking at the evils of that the evils that men do and the good that men do you see that thing give me ecclesiastes now chapter 12. okay ecclesiastes chapter 12. ecclesiastes 12 verse 14 watch this the book of ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 14. Read. For God shall bring every work into judgment. The most high God is going to bring every work into judgment. You understand? Come on. With every secret thing. With every what? With every secret thing. With every secret thing. Whatever I think is a secret, the Lord knows that thing. Because your angel is sitting right next to you. Writing down what the nigg is doing. He is writing down everything that you're doing. You understand? Read. Whether it be good. Whether it be good. Or whether it be evil. Or whether it be evil. Now go back to Hebrews 12 now. Hebrews chapter 12. So guess what? The Lord is going to teach. He's teaching us that it's easy to be at the spirit. That's what he's saying. That's why he's saying, listen. Don't say tomorrow I'll read the Bible and examine myself. No. When you get the chance, get it done. Why? Because you don't know what tomorrow is bringing. You understand? Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Come on. Wherefore? Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So this cloud of witnesses, guess what they do? They're beholding the evils and the good that men do. That's the eyes of the Lord up there. And down here on earth. Read. Let us lay aside every weight. It says lay aside every weight. Meaning what? The things that you are burdening yourself with, that you're supposed to give to the Lord, for the most high God to handle them for you. Read. And the, and the sin. And the what? And the sin. And the what? And the sin. And the sin. Go ahead. Which doth so easily. Which does so what? Which doth so easily. Which does so easily do what? Beset us. Because it's very easy to fall into sin. That's what the Apostle Paul is teaching us here. The Apostle Paul is teaching us it's easy to fall into sin. It's easy to break the laws of God. Why? Because why? We are moving with the spirit of evil because... Guess what? We've been in this land for more than what is we've been in oh my god, we've been in this land for too long. More than 800 years we've been here. You understand? 
since 70 AD. That's more than a thousand. So you think that it's not easy for you to fall into sin? It's easy. So guess what you must do? You make sure you surround yourself with men and women that will what? That will guide you the right way. Because a lot of the times we tend to be what? We tend to be emotional when we are corrected. We tend to be angry when we are corrected. We tend to have grudges when we are corrected. You start to have hatred to your hatred against your neighbor because he's correcting you. That's love right there. So you can't be holding a grudge against a brother correcting you. No. Because they are helping you. You men understand that? Yes, you sisters understand that? Okay, all well, praises to the Most High. Go back to Leviticus 23. Verse 43 now. Again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 43. Come on. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. To dwell in booths, come on. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Wait. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. That's what the Lord is saying, the God of Israel. Wait. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel. Moses did what? And Moses declared unto the children of Israel uh -huh. the feasts of the Lord. They did the what? The feasts of the Lord. The feasts of the Lord. Now give me Nehemiah 8, 14. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 14. Because remember, Moses is teaching us the law when we were in the wilderness at this point. Now we are in Persia under the East Indians as slaves. Guess what our forefathers are doing? They are observing the Feast of Tabernacles. Guess where we are now? In South Africa, 2021. What are we doing? Observing the Feast of Tabernacle as it is written. Now read that. Nehemiah 8 verse 14. Come on. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 14. Go ahead. And they found written in the law with the, with They did what? And they found written in the law They did what? And they found written in the law So how did they find it? That means they were, read, they were reading they were, they were studied, they were well studied men They studied the Bible That's why he says And they found written in the law How would you find it? You must read it You must study That's the only way you're going to find it It's not going to fall on your lap you understand? You must sit down and actually study this book. And when you don't understand, you ask. When you're given counsel, apply the counsel. Follow the command as it is written. Guess what? The Lord will give you understanding. Understand that? Read that thing again. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 14. Go ahead. And I found written in the law, uh -huh. which the Lord had commanded by Moses. That means they read the first five books. They read the law. They read the books of the law. The law. We? That the children of Israel uh -huh. should dwell in booths. Should dwell in booths. Go ahead. In the feast of the seventh month. In the feast of the seventh month. That's the feast of tabernacle. We? And that they should publish uh -huh. and proclaim in all their cities. Guess what? How do we do it today? We go to the street corners. We teach our people. We have classrooms. We have classes throughout the week. We put it on YouTube, wherever social media platforms our people to receive this word. That's how we are publishing it today. And what? Proclaiming it in the cities where people are scattered. We? And in Jerusalem. Uh -huh, because we are not in Jerusalem anymore, but we are Jerusalem. You understand? We? Say, go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches uh -huh. and pine branches go ahead. and myrtle branches. We? And palm tree and palm branches uh -huh. and branches of thick trees Ray. and make boots as it is written no, as it is what as it is written and make boots as it is written that's the boots we have here we had to set it up the brothers were done confused they thought it was an x when it was an h or vice versa there was a lot of confusion last night assembling this thing you understand all praises to the most side the brothers got it done all praise to the lord go ahead so the people went forth uh -huh. and brought them Come on. and made themselves booths. They made themselves booths, meaning what? We ourselves, the children of Israel, we had to do this thing. We. Everyone upon the roof of his house. That's when that's those that was in Jerusalem. Remember the first class that we had? Yes. So you just go back to that class once it's on YouTube, you understand, to understand 
what Nehemiah is saying read. read. And in their courts. And in their courts. That those that those our forefathers that were coming from different lands to observe the feast of Passover, the feast of Pentecost, and the feast of what? The feast of tabernacles. You understand? Read. And in the courts of the house of God. Read. And in the street of the water gate. Read. And in the street of the gate of Ephraim. Go ahead. And all the congregation of them that will come again out of the captivity uh -huh. made boots. They made boots. Go ahead. And sat under the boots. Read. They did what? And sat under the boots. That's where we, that's where we slept last night. We slept in those boots. Read. For since the days of Joshua, of Joshua, the son of Nun, uh -huh. unto the day had not the children of Israel done so. Read. And there was very great gladness. There was very great gladness. I mean, everybody was excited. There was the spirit of joy, the spirit of mirth. You understand? Nobody had a long face. Read. Also, Day by day. Day by day, meaning from the first day of the feast, read. From the first day unto the last day. Then the eighth day, you understand, the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. He read in the book of the law of God. He did what? He read in the book of the law of God. That's why I tell you, brothers, the Feast of Tabernacles, go over scriptures. Why? Because it's biblical. That's what we're reading here. Our forefathers, that's what they did. It says what? He read in the book of the law of God from the first day to the last day of the feast. Read that thing again. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 18. Go ahead. Also, day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God. He read in the book of the law of God, read. And they kept the feast seven days. They kept the feast seven days, read. And on the eighth day uh -huh. was a solemn assembly. And on the eighth day, was a solemn assembly. We all came together because it was a Sabbath. Okay, read. According to the man. According to the manner of the law. Now we read in Leviticus the 23rd chapter. That's what Nehemiah is teaching us here. Now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus 34 verse 22. Exodus 34 verse 22. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 22. Read. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. You shall observe the feast of weeks. This is the feast of what? What is the feast of weeks? Jonah, what is the feast of weeks? The feast of Pentecost. Go ahead. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest. Aha, uh -huh, Pentecost. Go ahead. And the feast of ingathering. At the year's end. The feast of ingathering, that's the feast of tabernacles. The feast of ingathering is the feast of tabernacles. Go ahead. Thrice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. You see that thing? This was a law. We were required to go to Jerusalem three times a year. You understand? On Passover, the feast of Pentecost, and the feast of ingathering, which is also called the feast of tabernacles. You understand? The gathering of our crops at the year's end. You understand? Give me Second Chronicles 8, verse 12. Second Chronicles. Because remember, this is Exodus 34. We're going back to the law. We was in the wilderness. Now, I'm going to take you during the time of the kings. Did our forefathers during the time of the kings, did they keep the feasts? Watch this. Second Chronicles. Okay, chapter 8, verse 12. Read that. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 8, verse 12. Go ahead. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings uh -huh. unto the Lord on the, on the altar of the Lord. Come on. Which he had built before the porch. That's Solomon's porch. Read on. Even after a certain rate, every day, uh -huh. offering according to the commandment of Moses. Offering according to the what? Offering according to the commandment of Moses. Because we're still under the law of animal sacrifice. Read. On the Sabbaths. Uh -huh. And on new moons. So that means they observe the Sabbath. They observe the new moon. Read. And on the solemn feasts. On the solemn feasts. Read on. Three times in the year. How many times? 
three times in the year. Three times in the year. Read. Even in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Indeed, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is the Feast of the Passover. Go ahead. And in the Feast of Weeks. That's the Feast of Pentecost, which we just came from. Read. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. That's what we're reading right now. That's what we're we are observing right now, the Feast of Tabernacles. Our forefathers, King Solomon, he observed that. Nehemiah observed that. Read. And he appointed, according to the order of David, his father. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Give me the book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 4. Ezra. Give me Ezra, chapter 3, verse 4. Watch this. The book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 4. Go ahead. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles. They did what? They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles. Come on. As it is written. As it is what? As it is written. As it is what? As it is written. As it is written. Go ahead. And offered the daily burnt offering. They offered the daily burnt offerings. Come on. By number. Uh-huh. According to the custom. According to the what? According to the custom. According to the custom. Read. As the duty of every day required. That's what we read in the book of Nehemiah. Day by day, that's what they was doing. We read in Second Chronicles. That's what they were doing every day for those eight, seven days. The eighth day being the Sabbath, which is the last day. You understand? Now watch this. The last day of the feast. Because somebody might say, he's saying the Sabbath is uh, Sunday. The hell is this? So now watch this. Give me, give me the book of John, okay? Because during the time of Christ, did our forefathers observe the feast? When Christ walked the earth, did Christ observe the feast? Give me that in John 7. John chapter 7 verse 2. Read that. The book of John chapter 7 verse 2. Go ahead. Now the Jews... Now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand. Read that again. The book of John chapter 7 verse 2. Read. Now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand. He says, he said that now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand. They were observing the feast of tabernacles. Jump down to verse 8. Listen to what Christ says. The book of John chapter 7 verse 8. Go ahead. Go ye up unto this feast. What did Christ say? Go ye up unto this feast. What did Christ command us to do? Go ye up unto this feast. That means observe the feast of tabernacles because he also observed it. Read. I go not up yet you see, unto this feast. You see the key word is, I go not up yet. Yet. Not yet, but I'm coming to the feast. That's what Christ is saying right here. Read. For my time is not yet full come. Meaning what? I, there's things I need to fulfill first. You understand? But he's not saying I'm not coming for the feast. He's not saying that because he observed every law in this Bible. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me Exodus 23 verse 16. The book Exodus. Of Exodus. Go ahead. Chapter 23 verse 16. Read. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people had found grace in thy sight. Read. Is no, no. Exodus 23, verse 16. 1 6. 1 6. Exodus 23, verse 16. So, what I'm showing you is our forefathers, they observed the law. That means our forefathers was always in the laws of Moses. Because how did they know? How did they find it in the scriptures as it is written that the Feast of Tabernacles must be observed? How did they know? Because they were always in the law. You understand? Even in the lands of our captivity, they did that thing. Guess what? Now we must follow after the footsteps of our forefathers. You understand? And do the same thing. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 6. Verse 16. One six. Come on, stay with me. Verse 16. Go ahead. And the Feast of Harvest. Uh-huh. The first fruits of thy labors, Read. which thou hast saw, sown in the field, which you have sown in the field, come on, and the feast of ingathering, the feast of ingathering, that's the feast of tabernacles, read, 
which is in the end of the year which is in the end of the year we when thou hast gathered in thy labors uh -huh. out of the field out of the field when thou hast gathered what when thou was what when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field because the feast of Pente pentecost you understand it connects into what the feast of in gathering because Pentecost, that's when we collect the first fruits of our harvest. Then the ingathering, that's the crops that are now old, now for you for, to, for you to put for storage. You understand? So they can keep you for the rest of the winter and the following year. So when the Passover is happening, you're going to be eating old stuff. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Now watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 16 verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 13. I'm almost done. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 13. Go ahead. Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles uh -huh. seven days. You shall observe the feast of tabernacles seven days. Remember, you would have to go to the field to gather your crops. This is not the feast of first fruits. No, the feast of ingathering. You understand? So you have to go to your fields to gather your crops now for storage so you can take care of your children, you can take care of your sons and daughters and so forth. Now, read that again, verse, verse 13. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 13. Read. Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days. Because that was a gift that we will receive from the what? From the field. Because that's when in Sperivar Wahuna, harvest, you understand? So that's a gift from the Lord, by the way. Because who gives you rain? The Lord does that. Who makes your plants to grow? The Lord does that. So when you go during the Feast of Ingathering, guess what? That's your gift from the ground who the Lord gave unto you. Now watch this. Go back to Exodus 23, 16. Pay attention here. Okay? The book of Exodus. Chapter 23, verse 16. Go ahead. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, uh -huh. which thou hast sown in the field. That goes into what? The feast of Pentecost. Go ahead. And the feast of ingathering. Now, this is the, at the end of the year now. The feast of ingathering, read on. Which is in the end of the year. Which is in the end of the year, read. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Out of the what? Out of the field. Out of the what? Out of the field. Goma shimu. Emasimin. That's what they call it, right? Goma shimu. Yes. That's what we're reading. Here. So that's a gift that the Lord is giving unto you. Now watch this. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 13 again. Go back there. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 13. Go ahead. Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days. So this feast was to do what? Was to give thanks to the Lord for giving you a gift. We know what meaning what? Your crops, your corn, your wine, and so forth. Because what grows from the ground, your flocks are going to feed from. When your flocks feed from there, guess what? Your children, that's what they're going to eat. You see that thing? Now watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 7 verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 12. We're still dealing with the gift. Because that's the gift that you're getting out of what? From the field. Watch this. Deuteronomy 7 verse 12. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. If ye hearken to these judgments. If you do what? If ye hearken to these judgments. If you listen to the judgments that will come upon you when you break these laws. Read. And keep and do them and keep and do them keep what and do what the laws of god keep the laws of god and do them so that you can understand the you so that you don't receive the judgment so that will give you understanding that will give you wisdom because now you have the fear of the lord on you wait that the lord thy god shall keep unto thee the covenant uh -huh. and the mercy and the what and the mercy you see mercy was always from the beginning mercy was always there you understand? And the mercy. Read. Which he swear unto thy fathers. The mercy which he swear unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go ahead. And he will love thee. He will love thee. The Lord says, I will love you if you keep my laws. 
That's the precept for John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Open your spiritual eyes, black man. Read that thing again. Because you love the scripture right there. Yes, you. Read that thing again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 13. Go ahead. And he will love thee. Uh -huh. And bless thee. The Lord will love you and bless you. Go ahead. And multiply thee. And he will multiply you. Go ahead. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb. The fruit of thy womb. Your children. You understand? He will bless your children. Go ahead. And the fruit of thy land. You see that part right there? That's the ingathering. The fruit of your land, the Lord says, I'm going to bless that. Wait. Thy corn. Thy what? Thy corn. Because that's what you gather at the year's end. During the Feast of Tabernacles. You understand? Giving thanks unto the Most High God. Read. And thy wine. And thy wine. Because we had farms. We had grape farms. And we created wine out of that. Read. And thine oil. And thine oil. Because we owned olive farms. Read. The increase of thy kind. The increase of thy kind, which is your cows. Read. And the flocks of thy sheep. Your sheep. Go ahead. In the land. In the what? In the land. In the what? In the land. In the land. Because we had land. We was in the land. Go ahead. Which he swear unto thy father to give thee. To do what? To give thee. To do what? To give thee. To do what? To give thee. So what is that? That's a gift. That's a gift. The land that God gave unto us, which is the land of Israel, that's a gift. Because land is value. Because the land, the Lord bless the land, the crops grow. Your flocks feed on that. Your children will be able to feed us. You take care of your family. That's why now we cannot get property. Now we live in mesh box houses. There's not even a yard. You don't even see grass grow. We get to see it when we come here. You understand? Because that was a gift that the Lord gave unto us. You understand? Read that thing again, verse 13. He says, in the what? The last part of that precept. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 13. Go ahead. And he will love thee, and bless thee, and multiply thee. Mm. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb. Go ahead. And the fruit of thy land. Go ahead. Thy corn. Come on. And thy wine. Uh -huh. And thine oil. The increase of thy kind. Read. And the flocks of thy sheep. Go ahead. In the land uh -huh. which ye swear unto thy fathers to give thee. You see that thing? That was a gift. The things that we would gather from the ground, the feast of ingathering, that was a gift from the Lord. So the Lord blessed you. Guess what? You give more based on how you were blessed. You understand? But if you are a cheap Negro, the Lord will give you cheap too. Understand that? Give me to Deuteronomy 8 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 7. Go ahead. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. The Lord your God will bring you into a good land. Go ahead. A land of brooks of water. A land of brooks of water. You know, you know the, four, the four rivers? The four rivers in Genesis. That's what this is going into. Go ahead. Of fountains. Uh -huh. And depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Meaning what? This land is fertile. It's a fertile land. Read. A land of wheat. A land of wheat. And barley. Uh -huh. And vine. Read. And fig trees. Come on. And pomegranates. Read. A land of oil, oil olive. Uh -huh. And honey. A land of oil, olive, and honey. Because what, what brings honey? Bees. And bees need to pollinate. That means there must be flowers. When it says the land of milk and honey, what brings about milk? The cows. The cows must feed on the grass. They are what? They are very what? They are, they, are, they are fresh. They eat healthy. The grass is, the, the ground is fertile. So that's where you get your milk from. The cows, because they feed on the grass. Because the land is fertile. The, the honey you get from bees because what the plants grow the, the 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 trees they pop up flowers the bees will pollinate to create honey you see that thing go ahead a land wherein thou shalt eat bread uh -huh. without scarceness he says you're gonna eat bread without scarceness because we had barley we had wheat farms and lands right Thou shalt not lack anything in it. You're not going to lack anything in the land. Go ahead. 
a land whose stones are iron. Are iron. So the stones are iron, meaning precious stones. Read. And out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Brass. That's a precious metal. Why do you think the nations don't want to leave this continent? Why? Because they know what's in here. Because they read the Bible. They read our books. Keep reading. When thou hast eaten and art full. When you have eaten and you are full, remember, the first fruit goes to the Mosai and goes to the Levites. Then your portion. Then at the end of year, the year, the crops are grown now. You get your crop, you gather your crops, you store them in the storehouses. Read. Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. For the good land. For the what? For the good land. For the good land. He says, bless the Lord your God for the good land. What makes this land to be good? Because it's fertile. The Lord is blessing it. Wait. Which he hath given thee. Which he hath what? Which he hath given thee. So what is that? That's a gift. You understand? So we lost that gift when we broke the laws of God. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something now. Give me the book of Romans 7 verse 14. Romans 7 verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Come on. For we know that the law is spiritual. The laws of God, they are spiritual. When we apply the laws of God, there's a spiritual benefit that goes with it. You break the laws of God, there's a judgment that goes with it, spiritually. You understand? The do's and don'ts. So read that again, verse 14. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. The laws of God, they are spiritual. Go ahead. But I am carnal. But I am what? But I am carnal. Go ahead. Sold under sin. But the part we want out of this is as for we know that the laws of God, they are spiritual. God's laws is spiritual. Hmm. Watch this. Go back to Leviticus 23. Now we're going to read 36 and 37. Leviticus 23, verse 36. Yeah. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, okay. verse 36. Give him faith. Must take him to All right. Okay, read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 36. Go ahead. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. He says, you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Read. On, on the eighth day shall be an holy convocation the unto eighth, you. The eighth day shall be a what? Shall be an holy convocation unto you. Read. And ye shall offer an offering in a solemn assembly. Uh -huh. And ye shall do no servile work therein. Read verse 36 again. I'm sorry. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 36. Come on. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. For so for seven days we would offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Right? Okay, come on. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. Read. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. He's repeating it again. You shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Read. It is a solemn assembly. Uh -huh. And ye shall do no servile work. So keep, that, keep those words in mind. You will offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Next verse. Verse 37. These are the feasts of the Lord. Uh -huh. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Read. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Come on. A burnt offering. A burnt offering. And a meat offering. Uh -huh. A sacrifice. A what? A sacrifice. Go ahead. And a drink and drink offering. Read. Everything upon this day. I am everything upon his day. Now watch this. We would offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Right? Now watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 53 verse 5. Isaiah 53 verse 5. He says, we would offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Watch this. Remember the laws of God, they are spiritual. Watch this. Isaiah 53 verse 5. Come on. 
Donc on va essayer. Chapter 53. Verse 5. Oui. But he was wounded for our transgression. This is talking about Christ. Yeah, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah is prophesying about Christ. Read that thing again, verse 5. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5. Read. But he was wounded for our transgressions. So Christ was wounded for our trans transgressions. The breaking of, of the laws of God. Read. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. Go ahead. The, chastis the chastisement of our peace was upon him. The punishment of our peace was upon him. Read. And with his stripes we were healed. With his stripes we are healed. Hold this. Give me First Peter 2.24. We're coming back here. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 24. Go ahead. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body. Uh -huh. On the tree that we, being dead to sins, uh -huh. should live unto righteousness. Read. By whose stripes ye, ye were healed. By whose stripes ye were healed. Who is this talking about? Jesus Christ. So, the apostle Peter is repeating to us what Isaiah prophesied. You understand? During the time of the Assyrians. You understand? By whose stripes you were healed. Go back to Isaiah. 53 verse 5 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Come on. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh -huh. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Read. And with his stripes we are healed. And with his stripes we are healed. It's the same thing that the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Peter was quoting the, the prophet Isaiah. Jump down to verse 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 10. Come on. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. To do what? To bruise him. To bruise him. It says it pleased the Lord to bruise Christ. Go ahead. He hath put him to grief. He hath put him to grief. Read. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt what? When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. An offering for sin. An offering for sin. So that offering that we were to make, he says, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. That's what we're reading here. You understand? That was symbolic of what Christ would do. That offering made by fire unto the Lord is what was symbolic of what Christ would do. For us, the twelve tribes of Israel. Read that thing again, verse 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 10. Go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord uh, to bruise him. To bruise him, read. He hath put him to grief. So when, he, when was he bruised? 33 AD. 33 AD, that's when he was bruised, when he was put on the cross. Read. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Come on. He shall see his seed. He shall see his seed, his people, come on. He shall prolong his days. Read. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Stop right there. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Now watch this. Give me Hebrews 9, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 9, verse 11. Come on. But Christ being come and high priest uh -huh. of good things to come. So the subject matters about our Lord and Savior. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. Go ahead. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Uh -huh. Not made with hands. Not the tabernacle that was set up when we were in the wilderness. The one, but the ones in the heavens. Read. That is to say. Uh -huh. Not of this building. Not of the temple that was built by men. Read. Neither by the blood of goats uh -huh. and calves. Neither by the, by the blood of goats and calves. Read. But by his own blood. But by his what? But by his own blood. But by his own blood. Read. He entered in once into the holy place. He entered in once into the holy place. Read. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. Having obtained the eternal redemption for who? For us. The 12 tribes of Israel. 
so we can get the chance to, to get the kingdom and rule the nations forever. Watch this. Jump down to verse 14. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Wait. How much more shall the blood of Christ, uh -huh. who through the eternal spirit, uh -huh. offered himself. He did what? Offered himself. He offered, he offered, he offered himself. Read. Without spot uh -huh. to God. He offered himself without God, without spot to God. Remember, it says what? When we shall make his soul an offering for sin. An offering for sin. Read the part again. When he what? Okay, read the verse again from the top. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Go ahead. How much more shall the blood of Christ, uh -huh. who through the eternal spirit, read. offered himself without spot to God. Read. Purge your conscience. Purge your conscience meaning what? To get your mind right so that you can understand. It can eat your conscience. It's not just monotonous because it was monotonous under the old covenant. You understand? Read. From dead works. From what? From dead works. The law of animal sacrifice. That, that's the dead works. Read. To you know, serve the living God. To do what? To serve the living God. Now watch this. Give me the book of First Peter chapter 1 verse 19. What the apostle Paul is explaining to us here says, Christ offered himself. He offered his soul. And what? His all shall be his soul. What? I'm butchering it now in Isaiah 53 verse 10. When he shall make his soul an offering for sin. Read that. First Peter 1, verse first, 19. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. Go ahead. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. No, first Peter 1, verse 19. Not second Peter. First Peter 1, 19. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. Come on. But with the precious blood of Christ. With the precious blood of Christ, come on. As of a lamb. Uh, Read. Without blemish uh -huh. and without spot. So Christ was that lamb that was without blemish and without spot. Meaning what? He did not sin. He did not sin. And he died for the 12 tribes of Israel. He offered his soul, you understand, an offering for sin. Now go back to Hebrews 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Read verse 15 now. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15. Come on. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. So Christ is the mediator of the New Testament, the New Covenant. Go ahead. That by means of death. By means of death, because he died on the cross. Come on. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. You see that thing? For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Under the old covenant, read. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. They which are called, they which are called. Who is called? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's us. We are the ones that are called. The elect of the Lord. We are called in this truth to do the work of the Most High God. So we can inherit the kingdom. Watch this. Give me Romans 5, verse 11. Okay. He made his soul an offering for sin. Romans 5, verse 11. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 11. Come on. And not only so, uh -huh. but we also join in God. Read. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. By whom we have now received the atonement. By whom we have now did what? By whom we have now received the atonement. The sacrifice. When he made his soul an offering for sin. Read the part again, verse 11. This is not talking about the day of atonement. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 11. Read. And not only so, but we also join in God. Read. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. By whom we have now received the atonement. We have now received. Received. Remember, he would what? He would offer his soul an offering for sin. Now he says we have now received the, the atonement. The sacrifice that he made. Because he is what? The mediator of the New Testament. Watch this. Give me Hebrews 10 verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Come on. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Come on. The law having a shadow of good things to come. Remember what we read in Hebrews 9. Christ was a what? 
He was a high priest of good things to come in Hebrews 9 verse 11. Read that again. Hebrews 10 verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Come on. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Read. And not the very image of the things. Come on. Can never with those sacrifices. Can never with those what? Can never with those sacrifices. With those offerings for sin. Sacrifices, burnt offerings, meat offerings, drinks offerings. You understand? Come on. Which they offered year by year continually uh -huh. make the comers there unto perfect. It couldn't make us perfect. It did not make us perfect. Wait. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Come on. Because that the worshippers once purged mm -hmm. should have had no more conscience of sins. Re re remember what he said. He says when it pertains to the conscience you understand? Watch this. Because I know some of you forgot to read. Hebrews 9 verse 14. Read that thing again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Go ahead. How much more shall the blood of Christ, uh -huh. who through the eternal spirit, uh -huh. offered himself without spot to God. Read. Purge your conscience. Purge your what? Purge your conscience. For you to get your mind right. Because our forefathers, their, mind was, their minds were not, was not right. Guess what? The children today, our minds is not right. We need the laws of God to get right. You understand? Because they, it didn't enter into the mind. We just wanted to, we planned sin and we prepared the sacrifice. We started offering the best sacrifices over time. We started giving what? We started giving evil sacrifices. Meaning your goat is, is limping, you give it to the Lord. That's what we was doing. You understand? Because it did not enter into the conscience. Give me Proverbs 24 verse 9. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 9. Read. The thought of foolishness is sin. That's what we was doing. The thought of foolishness is sin because what? That's where your conscience is. Your mind. In your thoughts. That's where your conscience is. So Christ, when he came into the world, when he was the mediator of the New Testament, he gave us now the, the new covenant now. Guess what? Now he took the laws to the next level. You understand? I'll give an example. Give me Matthew 5, verse 27. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 27. Read. Ye have heard it. Ye have heard that it was said, by them of old time. Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's Exodus 20 verse 14. Watch the next verse. But I say unto you. But I say unto you. So is he saying, I'm doing away with what Moses said? He's not saying that. But he's going to take it to the next level. Wait. That whosoever looketh on a woman. Whosoever looketh on a woman. Go ahead. To lust after her. To do what? To lust after her. Wait, so where does lust take place? In your mind, in your conscience. So now he's going right to your brain now. Your mind, your conscience. Read. Have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Because in your mind you're going to think foolishness. What is the foolishness? You're going to look at a woman. Instead of saying, you know what? I want to get to know the sister so I can get married. Here. No. You look at the sister. Immediately you want to have sex with the sister. So what's in your mind? Lust. So Christ took it a step further. So is he saying it's wrong to look at a woman? No. When you look and lust, that's where the problem is. You see that? That's the conscience now. So when he, when he was the mediator of the new covenant, it was to purge our conscience from sin. Go back to Proverbs 24 verse 9. The book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 9. Go ahead. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought, the thought, the thought. Because it takes place in your mind. Read. And the scorner is an abomination to men. Because the scorner is the fool. They hate knowledge. Now, go back to Hebrews. Okay? Hebrews 9. Verse 15, sir. Yeah, Hebrews 9, verse 14 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 14. Go ahead. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, Read. 
Purge your conscience. He did what? Purge your conscience. Purge your conscience. Because guess what? In the mind, the mind is full of foolishness. So when Christ died, it's so that he can purge your conscience. Because we're always thinking foolish things. You understand? Against the laws of the Most High. So Christ had to come to teach us again the law and to take it to the next level. Read. From dead works. From dead works. What was the dead works? Monotonous, you understand? Monotonous behavior of offering animals and planning our sins that we are going to commit. You see that thing? That's what we were doing. Okay, Hebrews 10 verse 2. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 2. Come on. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Come on. Because that the worshippers once purged. On the day of atonement once purged. Should have had no more conscience of sin. But we still had conscience of sin. Because at the mere fact that we were sacrificing, it was a reminder that we are in the midst of sin. That was always a reminder. But it didn't enter into the conscience to change the way we think. You see that thing? That's why Christ said, except a man be born again, your mind must change. You understand? Wait. But in those sacrifices. But in those what? But in those sacrifices. So the subject matter is about the sacrifices. You understand? Wait. There is a remembrance again. There is a remembrance again of the sins. Wait. Made of sins every year. Every year. You understand that? Read. For it is not possible uh -huh. that the blood of bulls Read. and of goats should take away sins. So the blood of bulls and goats when, didn't take away sins because there was always a remembrance of those sins. You understand? Every year. Read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. When Christ came into the world. You understand? When he cometh into the world. Read. He said, sacrifice and offering. Thou wouldest not, uh -huh. but a body hast thou prepared me. But a body hast thou prepared me. Which body? The body of Christ, right? Read. In burnt offerings uh -huh. and sacrifices for sin. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins, read. Thou hast, thou hast had no pleasure. The Lord says, I don't take pleasure in that anymore. Read. Then said I, mm -hmm. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Read. It is written of me. Come on. To do thy will, O God. Come on. Above when he said. Above when he said what we just read. Read. Sacrifice uh -huh. and offerings. Sacrifice and offerings. Read. And burnt offerings. And burnt offerings. And offering for sin. And offerings for sin. For sin. For sin. Read. Thou wouldest not. Thou wouldest not. I don't want that no more. Neither had his pleasure therein. Read. Which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the what? Which are offered by the law. Which law? Jump up to verse 1. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Go ahead. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not the very image of the things, Wait. can never with those sacrifices. With those what? Can never with those sacrifices. Jump down to verse 5. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he said, sacrifice and offering. He said what? He said, sacrifice and offering. Sacrifice and offering. Sacrifice and offerings. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Mm. Then said I. No, no, verse 6. Verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices. You see, he's repeating it again. He's telling you which law offered by the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice. Burnt offerings and sacrifices. Read verse 8. Verse 8. Uh -huh. Above when he said. Go ahead. Sacrifice and offering. Mm -hmm. And burnt offerings. Come on. And offering for sin. Thou wouldest not. Read. Neither had his pleasure therein. Uh -huh. Which are offered by the law. Which law? The laws that we just read in verse 1, 5, 6 and 8. The law of animal sacrifice. So he's repeating himself over and over. Keep reading. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Read. He taketh away the first, Read. that ye may establish the second. Come on. By the way which we... The, by the which will, come on, read it right. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. Come on. By the which will, uh -huh. we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ 
once for all. You see that thing? It says through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Remember it says, he shall make his soul an offering for sin. His soul an offering for sin. And he says, we shall receive. Now we shall now receive the atonement, the sacrifice, right? Give me Colossians 2.14. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 14. Go ahead. Plotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. The handwriting of ordinances that was against us is going to tell you what they are. Go ahead. Which was contrary to us. Which was against us. And took it out of the way. Which he took it out of the way when he established the second covenant. Right? Nailing it to his cross. Nailing it to the cross. Give me Galatians 5 and 1. He's going to explain to you the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Galatians 5 and 1. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. Read. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Read. And be not entangled again. Be not what? And be not entangled again. Read. With the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage. Just don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What is the yoke of bondage? Acts 15 verse 10. This is the yoke of bondage, which is the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, that he blotted out on the cross. Watch this. Acts 15 verse 10. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 10. Read. Now therefore, why tempt ye God uh -huh. to put a yoke upon the neck of his disciples? Yeah, of the disciples. To put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples what is the yoke that he put the, the, the apostles are talking about the law of animal sacrifice that was the yoke of bondage in galatians 5 and 1. the handwriting of ordinances that was against us Read. which neither our fathers mm -hmm. nor we were able to bear because our father forefathers couldn't bear it neither could we that's why christ had to come to blot them out go back to colossians now okay Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 now. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Read. And having spoiled principalities and powers. That's the scribes and Pharisees because they said in Moses' seat. They were the leaders. Read. He made a show of them. He made, only, he made a show of them. He mean he put them to shame. How? Read. He made a show of them openly. Uh -huh. Triumphing over them in it. How did he do that? When he resurrected from the dead. They never saw that thing. The man, they saw him on the cross and he resurrected from the dead. You understand? That's how he triumphed over them in it. Go ahead. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink uh -huh. or in respect of an holy day. He says, let therefore, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. Go ahead. Or of the new moon. Read. All of the Sabbath day. So, so now it says, because the scribes and Pharisees, guess what they were saying? You need to offer the sacrifices. Meaning, reject Christ, still continue the sacrifices. You understand? But now what you are reading here says, let no man judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. Because how did we respect these holy days? We were what? We respected them by what? By offering meat, drink, of meat and drink offerings. That's how we respected those holy days. You understand that? Now watch this. Ezekiel 45, verse 17. That's how we respected those holy days, by offering meat and burnt offerings. Ezekiel 45, verse 17. I'm almost done. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, verse 17. Come on. And it shall be the prince's part uh -huh. to give burnt offerings. He shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings. Read, that's the leaders now, the captains. Come on. And meat offerings. Meat offerings. And drink offerings. Drink offerings. In the feasts. In the what? In the feasts. In the feasts. In the feasts. The Sabbath, the new moons, the Feast of Tabernacles, Passover, Pentecost. Read. And in the new moon. And in the new moon. And in the Sabbath. Uh huh. In all solemnities of the house of Israel, Read. he shall prepare the sin of, of offering. He shall prepare the sin offering. He shall prepare the sin offering. Read. And the meat offering. And the meat offering. 
and the burnt offering and the burnt offerings and the peace offering way to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. That's the reason why this was done to reconcile the twelve tribes of Israel. That's why Christ did this thing to bring back all twelve tribes together as one. You understand? Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom together as one. Understand that? Go back to Colossians. Okay? Colossians 2.16 The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 Go ahead. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink uh -huh. or in respect of an holy day Read. or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Or of the Sabbath days because that's what we did. Offerings and bent, bent offerings and sin offerings. You understand? Read. Which are a shadow of things to come. Come on. But the body is of Christ. You see that thing? Those offerings that we did was a shadow of things to come. Now we read in Hebrews 10 verse 1. Then it says, but the body is of Christ. So the body of Christ is what now, now is going to be offered, which we read in Hebrews 10, verse 8 through 10. You understand that? Watch this, Romans 5 verse 11. No, give me Hebrews 10 verse 5 first. Hebrews 10. But the body is of Christ. No more animal sacrifice. Christ will be the ultimate sacrifice. And now we're going to keep the, our, our holy days, our feast days, guess what? In the faith of the sacrifice that he made. Okay? So read that. Hebrews 10, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, Come on. he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Read. But a body hast thou prepared me. That's what he says, but the body is of Christ. But the body has thou prepared me. Which body? Christ's body for the 12 tribes of Israel. Now give me Romans 5 verse 11. He says, but the body has thou prepared me. How did he prepare it? Watch this. Romans 5 verse 11. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 11. Read. And not only so. Read. But we also joy in God. Uh -huh. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, Go ahead. by whom we have now received the atonement. Now we have received the sacrifice that He made. That's why He says, "But a body has thou prepared me." You, our job is to receive that sacrifice. You understand? He prepared a body for us, but He said, "But the body now is of Christ." Your job is to receive it, receive the sacrifice that Christ made. You see that thing? Isaiah fifty-three verse eleven. Now let's go back. Keep that in mind. Don't forget where we left off at the beginning and what we're reading here. Isaiah 53 verse 11. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 11. Go ahead. He shall see of the travel of his soul. The travail of his soul, right? And shall be satisfied. The Lamosa God was satisfied what, for, of, because of what Christ did in verse 10. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, the Most High God was sacrificed, was satisfied with that. Read. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. He shall justify many. He shall justify many. Read. For he shall bear their iniquities. He shall bear their sins. Watch this. He says, By his knowledge shall my righteous servant, meaning Christ, justify many. Isaiah 45, 25. Read that. This is how Christ was going to justify us. Watch this. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 25. The many that Christ will justify. Isaiah explains it here in chapter 45. Come on. In the Lord. In the what? In the Lord. In the Lord. Shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. That's the many in Isaiah 53. The many that Christ will justify is the seed of Israel. He says, we shall be justified and shall glory. Meaning we shall get the kingdom. Go back to Isaiah 53, verse 11. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 11. Read. He shall see the travail of his soul. Go ahead. And shall be satisfied. Come on. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify men. Read. For he shall bear their iniquity. He shall bear our sins. Go ahead. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. The great is the hundred and forty-four thousand. Read. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. He shall divide the spoil, the spoil with the strong. Go ahead. 
because he hath because he hath poured out his soul unto death, mm -hmm. and he was numbered with the transgressors, uh -huh. and he bare the sin of many. The many in Isaiah forty five twenty five. Come on. And made intercession for the transgressors. We are the transgressors. He made intercession for us. He interceded on our behalf. Now you see that part when he says, and shall divide the spoil with the strong. Who's that? Give me the book of Romans 8.16. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Watch this. Isaiah 8 verse 6. I mean Romans 8 verse 16. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 16. Go ahead. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. Come on. That we are the children of God. Because when you had this Bible, you read, you heard about colonization, forced migration, apartheid, and so forth. You knew this is talking about you in Deuteronomy 28. So your spirit bear witness with what is written in this book. Read. And if children, if we are children, go ahead. Then heirs, then heirs, then heirs, then heirs, come on. Then heirs, heirs of God. Heirs of God, come on. And joint heirs with Christ. And joint heirs with Christ, read. If so be that we suffer with him, uh -huh. that we may be also glorified together. Together, together, all twelve, men and women. Now watch this. It says what? It says, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. When he says he will divide the spoil with the strong, the strong, we, is us. The joint heirs with Christ. You understand? Give me Galatians 3.29. Come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 29. Read. And if ye be Christ, if ye be Christ, read. Then are ye Abraham's seed. We are Abraham's seed. Watch this. And heirs according to the promise. And heirs according to the promise. Joint heirs with Christ. You see that part right there? First Peter 3, verse 7. First Peter 3, verse 7. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 7. Come on. Likewise, the husbands uh -huh. dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Come on, giving honor unto the wife. Give honor to your wife as unto the weaker vessel. Because he's, she's the weaker vessel, right? And as being as together. And being as and being as together, together. Go ahead. Of the grace of life. With them being as according to the promise, like we read in Galatians three twenty nine, right? That your prayers be not hindered. Okay, come on, watch this. Give me Ephesians 2 verse 8. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Read. For by grace are ye saved. For by grace we are saved. We are delivered by grace. Go ahead. Through faith. Through faith. And not of yourselves. Uh -huh. It is the gift of God. It is the what? It is the gift of God. Read verse 8 again. I need you men to pay attention here. You sisters too. Read the thing again, verse 8. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8. Come on. For by grace are ye saved. For by grace are ye saved. Let's understand the grace. Titus 2, verse 11. It says, By grace you are going to be saved. Watch this. Titus 2, verse 11. Come on. Before the book of Hebrews. The Titus, book of Titus 2. chapter 2 verse 11. Go ahead. For the grace of God. For the what? It, the, for the grace of God. For the grace of God. For the grace of God. The grace of God. Come on. That bringeth salvation. Uh huh. That appeared to all men. So the grace of God is the subject matter here. That bringeth salvation. Remember it says by grace you are saved. By grace you are saved. So for the, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. That's the all men of Israel. Read. Teaching us that uh -huh. denying ungodliness. So grace is going to teach you to deny ungodliness. Come on. And worldly lust. Worldly lust. Read. We should live soberly. Go ahead. Righteously. Come on. And godly in this present world. 2021. We must live godly in this present world. This present world, watch this, Judges 5 verse 11. 
Remember, grace says, by grace you are saved. What will grace teach you? To deny ungodliness, to live soberly, righteously in this present world. Keep God's commandments in this present world. Read the Judges 5 verse 11. The book of Judges chapter 5 verse 11. Go ahead. They that are delivered from the noise of archers read. in the places of throwing water in the lands of our captivity, read. They shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the law. We must rehearse the righteous acts of the law. That's what we're doing right now. Rehearsing the righteous acts. Feast of Tabernacle. You understand? 2021. We're rehearsing the righteous acts. As we rehearse the righteous acts, here's what happens next. Give me Romans 3 verse 21. Romans chapter 3 verse 21. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 21. Read. But now the righteousness of God without the law. The righteousness of God without, without the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice, read. Is manifested. Is manifested, come on. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. This is the righteousness of the law without the law is manifested. How is it manifested? Give me Romans chapter 8, verse 3. This is how the righteousness of the law is manifested. It says that the righteousness of the law without the law is what is manifested. How does it manifest itself? Watch this. Romans 8 verse 3. Come the, on. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 3. Read. For what the law could not do. What the law of animal sacrifice could not do. Come on. In that it was weak through the flesh. It was weak through the flesh. Read. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Read. And for sin. For sin. Condemned sin in the flesh. You see that thing? So his, his sacrifice ended that law of animal sacrifice. His death ended that law. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. Verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Read. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What verse you read? Read verse 4 again. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 4. Read. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So when Christ died, he died so that the righteousness of the law might be manifested. How? Must be fulfilled in us. We must keep the law now. The righteousness of the law without the law of animal sacrifice. Read. Who walk not after the flesh. Not after the law of animal sacrifice. But after the spirit. Now after the new covenant. The grace of Christ. Keeping God's commandments. Trusting in his word. In the sacrifice that he made. Go back to Romans 3 now. Verse 22. The book of Romans chapter 3. Verse 22. Come on. Even the righteousness of God. Which is by faith. Which is by what? Which is by faith. Which is by what? Which is by faith. Read. Of Jesus Christ. Of what? Of Jesus Christ. No, of the animal sacrifice, the blood, the blood of bulls and goats. Of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. Unto all uh -huh. and upon all them that believe. Read. For there is no difference. Now go back to where was that now? Go back to um go back to Ephesians 2 verse 8. Go back to Ephesians 2 verse 8 again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. For by grace are ye saved uh -huh. through faith Read. and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So by grace you are saved. We understand that. Now it says through faith. Give me Revelation 14, verse 12. We are saved through grace because grace teaches us to deny ungodliness. Then it says by through faith. Faith in who? Revelation 14, verse 12. Read that. The book of Revelations. Chapter 14, verse 12. Go ahead. Here is the patience of the saints. Come on. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Keep the commandments of God. That's the grace. And the faith of Jesus. And the faith that the sacrifice, the, 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 the faith in the sacrifice that Christ made. That's what he's saying right there. Go back to Ephesians 2 and 8. We're going to we close it up in a second. Come on. Chapter 2, verse 8. Come on. For by grace uh, are you saved. Read. Through faith, come on, and not of yourselves. Mm. It is the gift of God. It is the what? It is the gift 
of God. So the sacrifice that Christ made, it is the gift of God. Now watch this. Romans 7 verse 14 now. It is the gift of God. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. Come on. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the laws of God, they are spiritual. We are keeping the Feast of Tabernacle. There's a spiritual gain to it. Read. But I am carnal, uh -huh. sold under sin. Read it again. For we what? For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the laws of God, they are spiritual. Now watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. We know. That the law is spiritual. Watch this. Mm. First book of Corinthians, chapter 12, this one. Now remember, when we, during the feast of ingathering, don't forget the point now. Go back to Exodus 23, verse 16, because I know some of you forgot. Exodus 23, verse 14. Read that for me quickly. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 14. Read? No, verse 16. Exodus 23, 16. The book of Exodus chapter 23 verse 16. Read. And the feast of harvest. Read. The first fruits of thy labors. Go ahead. Which thou hast sold in the field. Which thou hast sold in the field. And the feast of ingathering. Uh -huh. Which is in the end of the year. Read. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. So when you are gathering in your labors out of the field. That is the gift of the Lord. That is the gift of God. Because those were physical things that we were receiving. The crops. You understand? And we will store them in the storehouses, right? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 now. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Come on. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Concerning what? Now concerning spiritual gifts. Because what we would gather in the, in the year end, those were physical gifts that we received. You see that thing? Those were physical gifts we received from the field. The corn, the wine. You see that thing? The corn, the wine, and the oil, and so forth. Read that thing again. First Corinthians. First book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Now this is concerning spiritual gifts now. Read. Brethren, uh -huh. I would not have you ignorant. He says, don't be ignorant of spiritual gifts. Don't be ignorant of these spiritual gifts. Go back to Romans 7 verse 14. Watch this. Pay attention, black man. Romans 7 verse 14. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 14. Go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. Go back to 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. First book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 1. Come on. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Concerning spiritual gifts. The law is spiritual. So the Lord is saying, don't be ignorant of spiritual gifts because you will get those spiritual gifts through the law. Right now we are keeping the righteousness of the law without the law of animal sacrifice. When you do that, you will receive spiritual gifts. When we did that, when we were in the land, we received those physical gifts, which is your oil, your corn, your wine, and so forth. The increase of your kind, the increase of your sheep and your flocks. Okay, come on. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Uh -huh. He says, don't be ignorant of that. Jump down to the street. Read. First book of Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Come on. Wherefore, I give you to understand. I give you to understand. That's the spiritual gift. Go, you see that? He says, I give you. That's a gift. You understand? For you to receive understanding, it's a gift of God. Read. That no man speaking by the Spirit of God uh -huh. calleth Jesus accursed. He says, if you are speaking in the Spirit of God, he says, you cannot call Jesus accursed. Read. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. He says, you go, you're not going to be able to say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? Acts 2, 38, real quick. You're not going to be able to say Christ is the Lord, because the Jesus Christ that they are teaching us in the world is what? Is white Jesus. But the biblical Christ, guess what? When you know the biblical Christ, guess what? Is because it's the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the what? The Spirit of Christ. Acts 2.38. Read that. 
the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Come on. Then Peter said unto them, uh -huh. Repent uh -huh. and be baptized every one of you Read. in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you see that? In the name of Jesus Christ, the biblical Christ, the black Messiah. Read. For the remission of sins. For the forgiveness of sins. Read. And ye shall receive. You shall what? And ye shall receive. You shall receive. You shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. How did we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? When we received the sacrifice that Christ made. That was the spiritual gift that we was given. You understand that? Go back to where was that. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Read. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God Come on. calleth Jesus a curse. Read. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord. Read. But by the Holy Ghost. Because that's the gift. That's the gift right there. Read. Now there are diversities of gifts. There are diversities of spiritual gifts. Okay, read. But the same spirit. But the same spirit of Christ, which is the gift. Read. And there are differences of administration. There's differences of administrations in the body. Come on. But the same law. But the same law. The same spirit of Christ. Read. And there are diversities of operation. Read. But it is the same God. It is the same God, read. Which worketh all in all. Which worketh all in all. All those that believe on Christ, his son. Read. But the manifestation. But the what? But the manifestation. Remember it says, he says what? He says the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in you. That's how it's going to be manifested. Read. Of the spirit uh -huh. is given to every man. Is what? Is given to every man is given that's a gift is given by the most high god read to profit with all to profit with all to profit the whole house of israel because when you gathered your crops in the field it was it was to benefit your whole house and the people that did not that that were that lacked guess what today is the same thing spiritually you understand spiritually you're supposed to benefit your nation Yourself, your wife, your children, your brothers, your sisters, the people, our people that don't know this truth. I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. Read. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Read. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. You see that thing? The word of wisdom, that's the, that's the spiritual gift. Meaning what? You have wise sayings. You understand? Brother has a problem. You pull a scripture, give him a wise saying. And he gets himself right. Read. To another, uh -huh. the word of knowledge. To another, the word of knowledge, the laws of God. Read. By the same spirit. The same spirit. These are spiritual gifts for the benefit of the house of Israel. Read. To another faith. By the same spirit. Another was given the spirit of faith. Having faith is a gift of God. Understand that. Read. To another, the gifts of healing uh -huh. by the same spirit. What is the gift of healing? The sister's got a problem. You understand? She cannot conceive. The sister's got what? The skin has got rashes and all of that. Guess what? The gift of healing is what? You go into the Bible. You identify the diet that the Lord gave. And guess what? The stuff starts to disappear. That's the gift of healing right there. That's a gift. Read. To another... The working of miracles. The working of miracles. From teaching from sun up to sun down. What do you think that is? That's a gift of God. We wake up in the morning, camp. Half past eight we're at camp. Seven o'clock, sometimes eight, sometimes half past nine at night we knock off. What do you think that is? That's the gift of God. Read. To another prophecy. To another prophecy. To be able to what? To unlock the prophecies in this book. That's a gift. Read. To another, discerning of spirit. Discerning of spirit, meaning you can tell that brother is full of BS. That brother is a good brother. You can tell that. Read. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Being able to speak multiple languages. French, you understand? Africans, English, Dutch. That, you understand? Diversities of tongue. Read. To another, 
the interpretation of tongues. And to be able to interpret those languages. Wait. Really. But all these work at that one and the self same spirit. Is the same spirit of Christ. The spirit of wisdom. Read. Really. Dividing to every man severally as he will. Dividing to every man in the congregation severally as he will. That means what? As we are observing the Feast of Tabernacles now in gathering, guess what? Spiritually, guess what the Lord will give us? Spiritual gifts. You understand? Spiritual gifts to understand. Spiritual gifts to, to have faith. Spiritual gift to do what? To have wisdom. Spiritual gift to discern spirits. The gifts of healing. Miracles, which is what? The way we teach. You understand? The faith we believe. The children believing in this day. That's a miracle. You understand that? That's what is that's what is about. Spiritually, because we're not in the land, but we keep the law. The law is spiritual. So we kept it in the land. The Lord gave us the gifts, which is what? From the ground. We don't know. We're not in our land. We don't own no land. But guess what? The Lord gave us the laws. We keep the law. There's a spiritual gift that comes with that. Understanding, wisdom, knowledge, application of God's laws, faith. We need all of those spiritual gifts in the body. For the what? For the give me that in uh, Ephesians now, 4 verse 11. You know what? Keep going. We read verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verse, verse 12. First book of Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. I'm kidding, I'm getting carried away. Read verse 12. For Come as on. the body is one. For the body is one, read. And has many members. Because we the body is one, one body of Christ, but it's got many members. We are the members. We and all the members of that one body. And all the members of that one body of Christ, we being many. Being what? Being many. We are many, come on. Are one body. Are what? Are one body. But we are one body, come on. So also is Christ. So also is Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 11. Read that. Read, read that thing for me. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Come on. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Read. And he gave some apostles. He gave some apostles. These are spiritual gifts. Come on. And some prophets. And some prophets. And some evangelists. And some evangelists. He gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, come on. And some pastors. And some pastors, read. And some teachers. And teachers. Pastors and teachers. You understand? Meaning some brothers are good at apostleship. But it takes time to ascend it to that. Years of experience. You understand? Prophets. Pro understanding prophecy. Evangelists wanting to travel to do the work of the Lord. You understand? Pastors and teachers. Read. Watch this. For the perfecting of the saints. The reason why we need this spiritual gift is to perfect the saints. Read. For the work of the ministry. For the work of the ministry. Read. For the edifying uh -huh. of the body of Christ. The body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. So we need to be edified. Read. Till we all come mm -hmm. in the unity. In of, the what? In the unity. In the unity. Read on. Come on. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, read. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. God's commandments, read. Unto a perfect man. Unto a what type of man? Unto a perfect man. Unto a perfect man, read. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Understanding and wisdom. Understand to get to the level that Christ was. Meaning what? How he taught, how he kept the commandments, the spirit of resistance for, from sin. You understand that? Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 8 21. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 21. Come on. Nevertheless, Wait. when I perceive that I could not otherwise obtain her, the her is wisdom. Read. Except God gave her me. Except God did what? Except God gave her me. Except God gave her me. Read. And that was a point of wisdom. That was also. A, that was a what? 
and that was a point of wisdom that, also. That was a point of wisdom. The point of wisdom is that only God can give you that thing. Read. To know whose gift she was. To know whose what? To know whose gift she was. To know whose gift she was. Read. I prayed unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And besought him. Watch this. Come on. And with my whole heart I said. Stop. Hold this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 7. Okay. The wisdom is a gift of the Lord. So he says he prayed unto the Lord and besought him with his whole heart. He wasn't double minded about it. Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 7. Read. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 7. Come on. Wherefore I prayed uh -huh. and understanding was given me. You see that thing? He says wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me. Read. I called upon God. Come on. And the spirit of wisdom. The what? And the spirit of wisdom. Come on. Came to me. Came unto me. Who gave that? The Lord gave that thing. The Lord gave him wisdom. He gave King Solomon wisdom. Likewise with us today. These spiritual gifts that the Apostle Paul is talking about. You understand? Wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 1. The wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 1. Read. God of my fathers uh -huh. and Lord of mercy. Read. Who has made all things with thy word. The Lord made all things with his word. If you read Genesis 1. Come on. And ordained man. Through thy wisdom. The most high God, he sets men through his wisdom. You men are being set up because of the wisdom of the Lord. Read. That he should have dominion over the creatures uh -huh. which thou hast made. Over all God's creation. Come on, like Adam. Read. And order the world according to equity. According to equity. According to what? Justice. Read. And righteousness. Uh -huh. And execute judgment. With an upright heart. You must execute judgment with an upright heart according to the laws of God. Read. Give me wisdom. What did he say? Give me wisdom. Because wisdom is a gift. Read. That sitteth by thy throne. You see where the wisdom of the Lord sits? By the throne of the majesty on high. Read. And reject me not from among thy children. And don't reject me from among my children. Thy children. Come on. Jump down to verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 9. Come on. And wisdom was with thee. And wisdom was with the Most High God. Come on. Which knoweth thy works. Wisdom knoweth the works of the Lord. Read. And was present when thou madest the world. It was in the beginning like we read in chapter 9 verse 1. Read. And knew what was acceptable in thy sight. And wisdom of the Lord knows what is acceptable in the sight of God. And when we receive those spiritual gifts, we also will know what is acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Read. And write in thy commandments. We're going to know what is right in God's laws. Come on. Oh, send her out of thy holy heavens. He says, send her out of thy holy heavens. He's praying for wisdom. Read. And from the throne of thy glory. Because he understood that wisdom is a gift of the Lord. Read. That being present, she may labor with me. So now, as we are laboring in this truth, guess who is laboring with us? The wisdom of the Lord. That's a gift. So we are in we are in the in we are in the feast of in gathering. What are we gathering now? The spiritual gifts. We are gathering the spiritual gifts right now. That's the feast of in gathering. Them spiritual gifts. Now we read in First Corinthians chapter twelve. Read that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. Because you're gonna know what is pleasing unto the Most High. Understand that. Keep going. For she knoweth and understandeth all things. Read. And she shall lead me soberly in my doings. Come on. And preserve me in her power. The wisdom of the Lord will preserve you. Remember, give me Joshua 5 verse 11. Wisdom of the Lord will preserve you. You understand? Remember, it says, come unto wisdom as one that ploweth. It says, come unto wisdom as one that ploweth. Because we would plow in the field, we will reap the first fruits, you understand? Year end, we'll gather the crops. You see that thing? So the Lord is saying, what is saying? Wisdom will preserve me. Watch this. Joshua 5 verse 11. Read that. The book of Joshua, chapter 5 verse 11. Come on. And they did eat of the old corn of the land. They did what? And they did eat of the old corn of the land. They ate of the old corn of the land. Go ahead. On the morrow after the Passover. That's the feast of Pentecost, first fruits, read. 
unleavened cakes uh -huh. and parched corn in the self same day. You see what we did? We had old corn, old stock. Where did we get that thing from? Because the Lord would preserve it. Now, because we are getting gathering spiritual gifts, what the, the wisdom of the Lord will preserve us in this truth until the Lord returns or we die in this truth, keeping God's laws. You brothers understand that thing? Yes, sir. Okay. Go back to where was it now? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9. Okay. Wisdom verse of 11. Solomon, chapter 9, verse 11. Read. For she knoweth and understandeth all things. She knoweth and understandeth all things. Read. And she shall lead me soberly in my doing. Come on. And preserve me in her power. Come on. So shall my works be acceptable. If you want your works to be acceptable, you must receive the spiritual gift. And how do you receive the spiritual gift? You observe the righteousness of the law without the law of animal sacrifice. Like what? Observe the Feast of Tabernacles as an example. Read. And then shall I judge thy people righteously. Then you're going to judge the nation of Israel righteously. Read. And be worthy to sit in my father's seat. Because now we are following after the footsteps of our forefathers that came before us. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 4 verse 5. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 5. Read that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5. Come on. Get wisdom. Get wisdom, come on. Get understanding. Get understanding. Forget it not. Don't forget the wisdom and understanding of this Bible. Read. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Don't decline from the words of the Lord's mouth, which is this Bible. Come on. Forsake her not. Don't forsake wisdom. Read. For she shall preserve thee. What will wisdom do? For she shall preserve thee. Remember, the Lord preserved our crops throughout the winter. He protected it so that what? It doesn't spoil. Likewise, this day the Lord will preserve us with his wisdom that we don't what? We don't get corrupted by the evils of this world. You understand that thing? Read. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Love her, she shall keep thee. Read. Wisdom is the principal thing. Read. Wisdom is the most, most important thing. Read. Therefore, get wisdom. Therefore, get wisdom because it's the principal thing. Come on. And with all thy getting, uh -huh. get understanding. You're going to get understanding when you receive wisdom. Read. Exalt her. It says exalt wisdom. And she shall promote thee. Wisdom will promote you, black man. You understand? From a man to a God on this earth to rule the nations. Read. She shall bring thee to honor. She will bring you to honor. Because right now we are not honored as a nation. We are not honorable before the nations. Read. When thou doest, embrace her. When thou doest, embrace wisdom. Read. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. Wisdom will give to your head an ornament of grace. Read. A crown of glory uh -huh. shall she deliver to thee. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. That's what wisdom of the Lord will do. You understand that thing? Yes, I need you brothers to understand. Go back to Romans 7 verse 14. Because I know you, some of you are lost. Romans 7 14. Read that. So we understand this thing. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know. We know it. It's not a, it's, it's not a mystery. We know. That the law is spiritual. How do we know? We see the Lord is doing what? The Lord is what is showing us favor and mercy. That's why today, this day, we are able to do what we are doing this day. Keeping of God's commandments. In the faith of his son. In the lands of our captivity. In South Africa. Who would have thought? Hmm? Who would have thought? You would be smoking that joint. Who, who would have thought that you would be here bringing a precept out? Think about that thing. Who would have thought that you'd be rocking fringes when you used to wear a vest? You understand? Hmm? Who would have thought? Who would have thought that day? Nobody would have thought that. Why? Because we walk with the Spirit of Christ. The Lord is with us. Understand that day. I hope you men understand what just came out. You understand? There's a spiritual understanding to all these feasts that we're keeping. So don't ignore them. That's why keep them feasts. Go back to John 7. Okay, because Christ commanded us this thing, so don't forget this. John chapter 7. 
We're going to break bread in a second. John chapter 7. Okay, verse 2 again. The book of John. Chapter 7, verse 2. Read. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Read. His brethren therefore said unto him. Come on. No, no. Jump down to verse 8. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 8. Read. Go ye up unto this feast. Mm -hmm. I go not up yet unto this feast. For my time, for my time is not yet full come. Now jump down to verse 14. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 14. Now about the midst, now, for, now about the midst of the feast. Now about the mists, the mist, meaning in the middle of the feast of tabernacles in verse 2. Read. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. So what footsteps are we following? Think about that thing, brothers and sisters. Read the thing again, verse 14. Watch this. Read again. Read again. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 14. Go ahead. Now about the midst of the feast. The midst of the feast. Are we not in the midst of the feast? We are in the midst of the feast this day. What did Christ do? Read. Jesus went up into the temple. He went into the temple. And taught. And what? And taught. That's some beautiful stuff right there. First Peter 2, 21. Read that. First Peter 2, verse 21. Come on. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Go ahead. For even here unto where you go. Uh-huh. Because Christ also suffered for us. Christ suffered for us, read. Leaving us an example. He did what? Leaving us an example. Christ left us an example, read. That ye should follow his steps. That we should follow his steps. Christ left us an example. That we must follow his footsteps. In the midst of the feast, what did he do? He went into the temple, he taught. What are we doing today? We are doing the same thing that Christ did. Following after his footsteps. So there should not be no confusion this day. Don't let nobody be confusing about nothing. Read the thing again. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Go ahead. For even here unto where you call. Read. Because Christ also suffered for us. Read. Leaving us an example. He left us an example. Read. That ye should follow his steps. That we should what? That ye should follow his steps. That we should follow. Follow his steps. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Come on. Be ye followers of me. Be ye follow, be ye what? Be ye followers of me. So the apostle Paul says we must be followers of him. Read. Even as I also am of Christ. Even I also am of Christ. So the things that Christ did, the apostle Paul did. So guess what? The things that the apostle Paul did, guess what we must do? We must do it. Because they followed Christ. You understand? Read that thing again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1. Read. Be ye followers of me. Be ye followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. Come on. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things. Come on. That you, you, that you what? That you remember me in all things. That you remember me in all things, read. And keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. And keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. What were the ordinances? Keep the commandments. So it says, keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Meaning don't change nothing. Don't add some spices like the brother was saying at camp. Give me that in Hebrews. Okay. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse... Read verse 6. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. So that we you know may boldly say. We may what? That we may boldly say. So right now we are boldly saying. What are we saying? The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my what? The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. Come on. And I will not 
fear what men shall do unto me. Don't fear what men will do to you. Don't be afraid of that thing. That's why when we go to camp, people don't like what we how what the Lord is saying. They, they want to threaten us. The Lord says, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid what men will do unto you. Read. Remember them which have the rule over you. Remember them which have the rule over you. Come on. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. No, we have spoken unto you politics of Julius Malem. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Politics. The word of God. Democracy. The word, word of, of God. God. The word of God. He says, remember them which have the rule over you. Those that will have the rule over you is those that will speak unto you the word of God. Understand that. Today our people, they look to what? Political lead, so-called political leaders and politicians and pastors who don't speak the word of God, they speak the word of the white man, which is white Jesus. Guess what? They don't have the rule over you. Watch this. Hold this. Give me that in Sirach 4. Okay? Sirach chapter 4. Verse 27. Watch what the Lord is saying. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 27. Come on. Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man. You see what God is saying? He says, don't make yourself an underling to a foolish man. You see what God is saying? Read. Neither accept the person of the mighty. Don't accept the person of the mighty because that's the foolish man. You are making yourself an underling to this foolish man. That's what our people are doing in politics and Christianity. Go back to where he was at now, the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. Come on. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Who have spoken unto you the word of God, read. Whose faith followed. Whose faith what? Whose faith followed. Followed their faith. Followed their faith, read. Considering the end of their of their conversation. Consider the end of their conversation. Consider the end of their conversation. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8. Read. Really? Despise not the discourse of the wise. He says don't despise the discourse of the wise. Meaning their wise sayings. Read. Really? But acquaint thyself with thy proverbs. He says, acquaint yourself with their proverbs. Read. For of them thou shalt learn instruction. Because you're going to learn instruction from them. Come on. And how to serve great men with ease. You see that thing right there? The minute we see start to see each other as great men on this earth, great women on this earth, the nation of Israel is not going to be built back up. That's why you must honor your brother. Honor your sister. And vice versa. Why? Because we bring honor to the nation of Israel. Have salt in yourself. You see that thing right there? Have salt in yourself. You go back and watch that class. Go ahead. Miss not the discourse of the elders. Don't miss the discourse of the elders, meaning your leaders that the Lord has set over you. For they also learned of their father. That's why the apostle Paul says, be you followers of me, as I also am of Christ. Read. And of them thou shalt learn understanding. Uh -huh. And to give answer as need requires. Because you're going to know what to say. That's what he's saying right there. I'm going to end the class right there. We're going to break bread. Okay. Before we break bread, by the way. Before we break bread. Give me the book of Proverbs 4. Okay. Proverbs chapter 4. You know what? Let's break bread. I'm sorry. Let's break bread. I'll deal with this after. First Corinthians 11 verse 23. Let's break bread. In, the, in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right? First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, to bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it and remember it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. 
Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 All praises to the Most High.